As the dollar was going higher, stocks and risk assets were getting crushed. We even saw gold getting crushed, right? So the fact that the dollar near term has topped, it should give the stock market crypto a little bit of a reprieve to maybe have a small bounce higher. Wow. So, I mean, with the volatility in the stock market, there's been some great, great plays. You know, the markets had gotten crushed from June into through July into early August. Then we saw the stock market stage a massive rally up, then a big fall just in the last couple of weeks before this latest bounce. So, so I would say in stocks, it's been tremendously good in terms of swing trading and day trading and kind of positioning yourself. And then I also think, you know, gold is starting to look very interesting down here. Uh, it's looking like like it's trying to hold support. And I think the biggest thing out there that investors should be paying attention to is the dollar and then the 10 year yield. And those both have been on a tear lately, although it does look like the dollar may have topped. So short term, we probably have a near term top in the dollar. It doesn't necessarily mean we can't go higher in a few months, but there were some key things that actually happened here. And I'm going to bring up and I'm going to show this chart for you guys. Um, let me just bring up my charts here and I'll show you guys what we have going on. But if we look at the US dollar, the uh, USD JPY, which is the dollar yen, I wanna show you this. So this is a line that I was following recently and you saw the, the yen was just getting crushed against the dollar more and more. But look at the trend line that we just hit a couple days ago. And that to me was a signal that the dollar may start to weaken. And sure enough, we've started to see that. We should see a continued pullback on the dollar yen all the way back to at least 139. So there should be some more downside that does imply that the dollar, the DXY should also stay weaker in the near term. But but that was a big one for me. Like like so much of this market has been been driven by the strength in the dollar. And what I mean by that is as the dollar was going higher, stocks and risk assets were getting crushed. We even saw gold getting crushed, right? So the fact that the dollar near term has topped it should give the stock market crypto a little bit of a reprieve to maybe have a small bounce higher. So, so definitely we're looking at that headline and core number on the CPI data. So the consumer price index, which basically is what the market's paying attention to so, so closely because it's what the Federal Reserve will likely gauge their next rate decision on, right? So if you still see very high inflation and it's not coming down, it's likely gonna signal the Fed has to do 75 basis points at the next meeting. My guess is considering, I mean, you look at oil and oil has collapsed into the 80, mid 80 range or so. I mean, we've seen copper, we've seen nickel, all of these commodities have come down so sharply. It should be trickling through to the consumer price index, which means inflation should show that it is kind of fading a little bit. Now, I think the kicker is gonna be this, is that I don't think we're going back to that 2% or under that the Fed really wants us to get to for years. And I think that's gonna be a big issue down the line as they're not gonna be able to stimulate if we go into a recession. So if you think about it, every recession we've had for the last 20 years, basically, the Fed has stimulated in some way, whether it's printing of money or dropping interest rates or, or buying bonds to have on their balance sheet, they've been doing massive stimulus. That was all with 2% or less inflation. The fact is we're at a point where unless they get that below 2%, they can't print money again to save us from the next recession. And that's the boogeyman to me. That's the real scary thing. If this economy goes into recession, how do we get out without the Fed's help? Yeah, I'm kind of right in that 4%-ish area, give or take a little bit. And I think that's going to be elevated enough that it's going to make it very hard for the Fed to stimulate in the next recession. And that's, that's again, really a tricky scenario because I feel like the markets are so conditioned to say, oh, well, you know, if we go into a recession, no big deal. The Fed will print some money and we'll get out of it in a six months or whatever it may be. But they can't do that because what will happen is you'll see inflation surge back this time maybe higher than 10%, maybe 15%. And again, that's gonna keep them on the sidelines. And the markets, like, like a child that kind of doesn't have their parents standing by to protect them anymore, the market is gonna have to figure it out on its own and it probably won't be super fun. Yeah, so I found that so fascinating, right? And, and so let's let's rewind even more to Jackson Hole. So Jackson Hole, he came out extremely hawkish, like the most hawkish I think we'd ever heard him speak. 
and the markets freaked out and we saw a big sell-off that day and really the following one week period was a massive sell-off in the stock market but if you look at the underlying factors the market the bond market which is actually the smarter of markets it's the market that has more money it has more big money so so people think about it as being the smarter of the markets when you compare the stock market to the bond market those the bond market did not believe him right so let me bring up this chart and i think this is such a cool chart to show um so we're going to look at the 10-year yield chart so the 10-year yield which is interest rates and if you look at this is the daily chart and over here this was in june so in June, the 10 year yield was at 3.5%. When Jackson, when the comments for Jackson Hole came out, we were at 3.1 and we've only gone back to 3.3, even with the most hawkish comments the Fed has ever put out on hiking rates and being just hard against inflation. And what that tells me is that they believed that rates were gonna go higher back here than over here. And so basically the bond market is calling the bluff from Jerome Powell and saying, you know what? We think you're talking a tough game, but we think that when the economy starts to weaken, you're gonna back off really quickly and we're not gonna see rates as high as what the stock market is thinking in this situation. And I think you could almost confirm that with the DXY, right? So yesterday, we or, or in the last couple of days, we had those comments from Jerome Powell again. He reiterated his hawkishness. And what happens to the dollar? Instead of rallying higher, it actually fell. And so again, now the, now the currency markets are starting to doubt Jerome Powell. So I'm in the camp that I think it all depends on the, the CPI data next week, whether it's 50 or 75. But I do think if the inflation comes down decently, we might only see 50 basis points in the September meeting. Yeah, and I, I think the main reason for that, and a lot of people are confused, is that coming off of the pandemic, there's some really weird dynamics going on. So it's a little bit different um, versus the GDP of a normal cycle versus what we did see. So I understand why people are kind of like not willing to call that a recession. Now, having said that, I do think that if you see another quarter of negative GDP, then absolutely you have to call that a recession. And I also think if you start to see the jobs numbers decline into negative territory where we're actually losing jobs numbers, uh, then you also have to say, okay, at this point, we think that we're in a recession at this point, but very weird time right now coming off. Yeah, so that's almost one of the reasons as well why I'm kind of leaning towards if I had to choose was there it's a 75 or a 50, I'm going with 50 right now, not only because I think the CPI number is going to come down a little bit and make it more comfortable for the Fed to do 50, but also because they're reducing their balance sheet, which when they reduce their balance sheet, it also works as a tightening measure. So it's, it's almost like they, they would almost equal 75 basis points by doing 50 basis points and also reducing their balance sheet at the same time. And I think the Fed has to be so careful. Like this is, and, and again, he has to talk a, a, a hawkish game. I understand Jerome Powell, but they have to be so careful that they don't overdo it and push us into a bad recession because it's not like five years ago or two years ago or six years ago where they can print us out they can't and so if they really trigger a bad recession we're the economy is going to be stuck in that recession until it figures its own way out and that i hope the federal reserve is very aware of that